Hello, and I wanted to read to you today the first book that is featured in our class newsletter. It is called Beautiful Shades of Brown, and I am so excited to read this book to you. It has such beautiful art in it, and we're going to just hop in, so I hope you enjoy. And as always, I'll read you the text and then I'll show you the pictures. Laura loved the color brown. She loved her mother's chocolate-colored hair, her father's caramel coat, and all the different browns in the cheeks of her younger sisters and brothers. Some languages have 50 words for snow, she thought, swirling her brush in a puddle of chestnut paint. There should be 50 words for brown. It was hard to get each shade right. Laura dabbed a spot of paint on her skin. It didn't match at all. Not until she added some red and yellow. Maybe you didn't see brown in a rainbow, she thought, but brown was a rainbow with orange and blue and red and green tucked inside, playing hide and seek. Laura spent hours mixing and blending, trying for the precise shade of the russet crinkles of her father's eyes and the coffee-colored creases in her mother's hands. She bribed her sister and brothers with peppermints to sit while she tried to capture all their colors. One day she dreamed her paintings would hang in museums, and everyone would see how much color brown could hold. That was a crazy idea for a 10 year old in Connecticut in 1897. African Americans had separate neighborhoods, churches, and schools. Nobody was going to put paintings of African Americans on museum walls. Laura was young, but she was determined. Maybe there weren't portraits of African Americans in museums yet, but she could turn her room into a gallery. At least there, her sister and brothers could see pictures of people with all different shades of brown smiling back at them. All through high school, Laura wanted only one thing, to go to a real art school, a place where she could learn to get the images she saw in her head onto canvas. She applied to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. It was far from home, expensive, and nearly all white. But then she got the acceptance letter. There was no question Laura would get a job if she had to, but she would go. The Academy was a good start, but Laura was hungry to learn more, to be around real artists. Everyone knew there was only one place to study art, Paris. Laura worked hard and won a scholarship. Clutching her paint box, she boarded a ship. Just like art school, nearly everyone around her was white, but her sketchbook was filled with portraits of people she loved, with luminous brown tones she didn't want to forget. In Paris, Laura visited museums and studied the paintings of Monet, Manet, and Cezanne. She set up her easel in the Jeux de Palme and copied the green skin of Lortex singers, the blue faces of Matisse's women, the caramel bodies of Gauguin's Tahitians. All the different ways people could be painted reminded Laura of what she'd wanted from the start, to paint portraits like the people she knew, people full of beautiful shades of brown. Back home in Philadelphia, Laura heard about a young African-American singer performing Handel's Messiah at the Union Baptist Church. Marian Anderson was just a teenager, but when she walked out on stage, she held her head high as a queen. Then Marian sang, and she didn't sound young at all. Laura's eyes filled with tears. It was as if she was hearing what she'd been trying to paint for so long. Marian's notes rose and danced about her in beautiful shades of brown. One day, I'm going to paint Marian Anderson, Laura promised herself.
Paris had made Laura's paintings more bold and confident. News spread about the remarkable artist whose subjects breathed on canvas. In 1944, the director of the Harmon Foundation told Laura they wanted to build a collection of portraits of important African Americans. Would Laura like to paint them? Yes, she would. Laura painted journalist and activist Alice Dunbar Nelson with ebony brown gloves on her rosy brown skin, proud in a bright yellow dress. She painted Broadway lyricist and poet James Baldwin Johnson, a dashing dark mustache on his sensitive face. She painted educator and writer W.E.B. Du Bois, wearing a warm brown suit and smoky topaz tie, holding Searle colored glasses. Laura was looking for more subjects when she saw a familiar name in the news. Marian Anderson had just been invited to sing at the White House, the first African American to do so. Marian's music was breaking down walls. Could a portrait by Laura's break down walls too? Laura asked Marian if she would sit for a portrait. Yes, she would. Day after day, Marian posed. Laura mixed shades of brown, burnt umber with yellow and dabs of white. No, that wasn't it. How about a little green and violet? Closer. Laura wiped her paint-spattered forehead, traces of red and cerulean blue. Laura looked at Marion and saw again the teenager singing so soulfully years ago. She heard again the music in all its beautiful shades of brown. She felt the melody travel down her fingers as she dipped her brush into the paints of her palette and found the exact luminous shade of Marion's beautiful brown skin, her gown, the room. Laura put down her brush. She held her breath as Marion studied the painting, hoping the great singer would see her spirit mirrored there. Marion smiled. Yes, she did. People flocked to see Laura's paintings as they traveled around the country. After the tour, the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. hung Laura's paintings in the National Portrait Gallery. Now her portraits weren't hidden in her bedroom, but hung in gilt frames on the walls of a real museum. Now everyone could see the rainbow shining through each tone of brown. And children like her nieces and nephews could see faces like theirs and how beautiful they were. So the next couple pages are going to be images of her paintings. So I want to show you those, and I'll go really slow so you can see them. And there's an author's note at the end and a timeline. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you the author's note, and then um, that'll be it. When Laura Wheeler Waring was born on May 16, 1887, only 22 years after the Civil War ended, African American children couldn't go to the same schools as white children, and African American adults didn't have the same career opportunities as white people. Laura believed that paintings of great African Americans would bring distinguished educators, artists, poets, activists, and leaders the recognition they deserved so that their accomplishments wouldn't be forgotten and they could inspire new generations. When the Harmon Foundation commissioned her to paint portraits of important African Americans, Laura had a chance to make her childhood dreams come true. She painted six portraits for the exhibit called Portraits of Outstanding American Citizens of Negro Origin which also featured paintings of African Americans by white painter Betsy Graves Renault. Laura painted Marian Anderson in 1944. Both Laura and Marian broke racial barriers with their art by showing the universality of virtual, or by visual and musical genius. 
Following the exhibit's tour, the portraits became part of the National Portrait Gallery of the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., where you can still see them today. My thanks to Aaron Beasley, Digital Image Rights and Reproduction Specialist and the National Portrait Gallery Smithsonian Institute, and she goes on to keep thanking people, so I'm going to stop there. But um, if you're in my class, um, I have a Padlet that is for art, and what I will be doing is I will be putting pictures and links to the different people that are mentioned in this book here. And if you're not in my class and you are interested, you can go back and you can check out the different names that are mentioned. Just pause the video when you hear one and do a little Google search for it. Um, again, I'm so, so excited that I got to share this book with you. It just came out this year um, in 2020. So it's hot off the presses and pretty exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you later. Bye.